My name's Annette. I'm with the Hunter College New York City Food Policy Center. And today's class, we're going to learn how to make Tuscan bean soup and learn a little bit about food waste, how to repurpose some leftovers that you might have um, sitting around and how to make your own vegetable stock from vegetable scraps. So first off, um, in the Tuscan bean soup, we start with ingredients that are pretty common as a base for most soups and stews. So um, we've already chopped up some, but I was going to have you guys perhaps think about um, maybe peeling some carrots because we're going to use the skins from the carrots, the skins from the onions for our vegetable stock. If you've got this excess, why not use it for something that you can make that's delicious and healthful, right? Well, you know, it's a nice way to be um, economizing and also minimizing food waste at the same time, right? Because after we use these scraps, they can be composted even more easily, right? So we're cutting down on food that is going into a landfill that creates greenhouse gases, right? And has an impact on climate change. You can use all your stems. You know, we, we used here um, the papers from the onions. We're also gonna use the papers from the garlic. There's flavor in all of that. And so this bag, you know, I keep in the freezer and I usually make stock every time it gets filled and then I put it in a bag like this. You could not use a bag like this. You could just dump it into your stock pot filled with water and then just string it out at the end. Either way, it works. But once we get done with the stock, you know, you'll see that you can use it to cook your rice. You can use it as a base for soups, stews, all sorts of things, right? Um, even cook pasta with it. Some beautiful stock. Now we're gonna start our soup, all right? It, this is a really simple soup you can add any number of vegetables to it. So it's a Tuscan bean soup. Um, and you, you know, you can also cook your beans from scratch. If you've got some that you've already prepared during the week, you can cook these, say, in your vegetable sauce, right? They'll have more flavor. Or you can buy beans in a can. Put a little bit in. I think the recipe calls for close to a quarter of a cup. I don't think you need all of that amount in the beginning. So this is gonna take a few minutes. So you wanna add in some beans? We're gonna put in some canned yeast that are already cooked and prepared, right? And if your tomatoes are getting a little soft and, and maybe you're not ready to eat them quite yet, chop them up, throw them in a freezer bag and put them in the freezer. Um, a farmer once told me from upstate New York, he said that, you know, he grew tons and tons of tomatoes and he's like, you know, he wanted to make tomato sauce and, and can it but he didn't have time during harvest season, of course. So he, his answer to that was just to cut up the tomatoes, put them in the freezer without cooking them, and then he could pull them out and then cook them down and actually process them and can them. So we're gonna let this come to a little bit of a boil, guys, and then you can add the bread. The great thing about using stale bread is that it absorbs more of the liquid too, so it gets a little more glutinous in the, in the, the pot. But it's a great way to use stale bread. Sometimes I get that bread that has the cheese in it and put it in 